Hi everyone, it's Anthony Duarte from Eccentric Engineer. Today I wanted to make a video showing the assembly of the new Nathan 1918A non-lifting injectors. Uh, it's been a really fun project and I thought you guys would enjoy seeing one go together from all the parts scattered out to a complete assembled ready to ship injector. So um, the first step's already been completed, which was to press in the combining cone. I did these all at once and I made a special mandrel to do it because I didn't want to risk compressing the body. Um, there's two distances in here that are uh, very critically machined to very precise distance and if they got crushed even by a couple thousands it would uh, make a difference on the injector's performance. So that's already been done. But uh, let's go ahead and put in some of these caps. So on the prototype there was a little flapper check in here which helped with priming, which is not necessary on this, but uh, I still wanted to have the cap as a separate piece and not cast in, because I just think it looks much better. So even though it's decorative, it does need to be tight to seal off the combining chamber. And then this was the a check valve in here for the delivery, uh, which is a redundant against the boiler check, but that was typical on full-size injectors to have a redundant uh, check valve. And this needs to be tight too just because on a handful of injectors the drill would either just slightly break into the core or there'd be little pinhole leaks in there so delivery pressure will come into this chamber on some of them so having that tight doesn't hurt. Uh, they've all been tested so I know not, nothing leaks so let's do the steam cone next. I just, I really like the way these look. Um, with the, the external hex on top and I think they, compared to the other steam cones I make, this looks a little more like a prototypical steam cone. So these go in, you know, once you feel them stop, you just give it a little extra pinch they don't have to be crazy tight because as the injector gets used that will scale up and that thing will will get locked in there tight and if you really crank it down by hand um, then once it gets scaled in you'll never be able to get it out not never but it just makes it much more difficult so let's do the water valve next nothing too fancy here the, uh, the valve itself is 316 stainless, which is one of the most corrosion resistant stainless steels. It's a little Teflon packing gland and a little packing follower, which I found really helps. Um, just makes it tighten much more uh, effectively. Thread this into the body and try to hold this so it looks all right in the frame. Okay. What shall we do next? Let's put the delivery cone in. This was a little challenging to figure out. If you're familiar with my products, you'll you might notice that this looks a little different than other delivery cones I've made and the delivery cone actually ends um, about where these threads are so I had to extend it to get it to where it can thread into the body and not cut off my overflow because the overflow sits really low on this um, at least too low for the model injector design so getting this to fit in was a bit challenging so it has an internal 316 hex rather than an external hex like most of my injectors which I actually actually really like I liked it more than I thought I would it's pretty pretty sturdy getting it in and out and be much harder to strip than an external hex so we're gonna set this up for left hand so um, Typical practice was to have the overflow body, this guy, uh, facing outward of the locomotive, make it a little easier to see from the cab. 
So if this injector was sitting on the left hand side of the engine, I'll do it this way. So if you're the engine or if you're the fireman looking down at the injector, the water valve is facing back and the uh, delivery is coming out towards the front of the engine. So if this is on the outside and this is on the fireman side of the engine, this goes on this side. And this this is clocked in, so once you get a good tighten on, tightening on it, it's, it sits straight up and down. So now, did I get that right? Yes. The, uh, the valve for the overflow is pretty simple. It's just a little cap with a guide hole in it and a little parts are so small goes in there and then this threads in oh actually before I do this one thing I like to do after I assemble the delivery cone in there with the washer is give it a little shake so I can hear that um, the washer in there is not only there but moving freely just to a simple way to check to make sure that uh, all things are as they should be. Put the bottom cap in. And this seals off the other side. So if I screw up and send you a right hand instead of a left hand, all you have to do is unscrew the overflow and unscrew the cap and switch them. And the overflow will clock in either side of the injector on any injector body. They're all machined exactly the same. Okay, it's going nicely. Put this connection on for the overflow. And let's do the steam flange. So this little filter um, has a, what, six, seven, I think 18 holes in it total, um, about 132nd. So the, I, I did the math to make sure that the total volume of these little holes was more than adequate. So there's no flow restriction, but the holes are small enough that nothing can pass through them that would get stuck in the injector. So filter goes in and if this gets scaled and stuck in there's a thread on the inside and I provide a little tool that you can thread in there and, and pull it out if need be. It's just the this one. I don't know if you can see Two edges on these are chamfered, and those face in inward towards each other. Because otherwise, you'll, your your bolts and nuts will be clamping down on a on an angled surface. So the outside needs to be the side that's flat. We'll get this flange sort of pre-assembled here. The uh, nuts and bolts I had custom made by uh, Wayne Godshall. These are the American Model Engineering hardware. But I do include spares with the injector just in case. If you lose some, you'll have a few extra in your toolbox. And if you need even more, I have even more. We'll get this just started, loosely put together, and then just thread it on. So I'll do this upside down so the nuts don't interfere. Right about there is good. When I send these out, they are just um, 
They're not super tight, just tight enough to make sure everything's held securely. Just come around. Okay. Looks nice. Looks square. Now let's do the delivery. Same procedure. Pre-assemble the flanges. I like to do this side. Um, on the steam end, I, I put the bolts on top so that if you were to disassemble it, gravity keeps the bolts in and the nuts fall out. You can catch them with a cup or something. And then on this one, I like to do it the other way. Um, the bolts on the opposite side of the flange. Um, so that if you disassemble this one, the bolts stay in. Basically, I always try to assemble them so that when you take them apart, the bolts stay put. So the nuts are the things falling out and not the bolts. If that makes sense. With the filters in there, hopefully you'll never have to take this thing apart once it's been put together. And the uh, delivery cone is very, delivery and steam cone are very easy to take out without disassembling the connections. So for maintenance, you shouldn't ever have to take these apart again once your injector has been put on. Um, I suppose unless you had to clean the filters, but. Okay, last is the water valve. So we have a filter for this too, and the, the tool that I provide is double-ended, so it has 3 16 40 threads for the uh, steam filter and quarter 40 for the water filter. And this, even though these holes are tiny, the total cross-sectional area of all these little holes is equivalent to a, uh, what is it, 7 30 seconds? 9 30 seconds, a 9 30 seconds uh, inner diameter tube. So it's more than enough. This one kind of clicks in. And this one, the flange has to go on first because there's not quite enough clearance between the bolt head and the body. So we'll thread this on to where I like it. I go to where it, the, um, the casting just barely sticks out uh, up from the flange. And now with this in, we, we can turn the flange to drop in, flange to drop in the bolts. Hopefully you can see this. This is this is a good example of why the bolts need to go on top if it's vertical. Because now if you needed to disassemble this and you take the nuts off the bottom, and you can catch the nuts in a cap, and this stays this stays all together here on the injector. And then when you go to reassemble it, you just put it back on. And tighten up the nuts. Uh, it could be a little tricky to get these nuts on, but this this tool works perfectly. This is a Weha um, nut driver made in Germany. And they're perfect because when you put the nut in, it stays close close enough to the surface that uh, I don't have to worry about it falling back deep inside so I can just I can start the nuts with the wrench rather than trying to fuss with it by hand suppose if you were to have something in your toolbox I would I would get one of these one of the long ones well two of them and then cut one short so that when you're out 
in the, you know, if you're servicing your injector out on the track, you have something that you could quickly just get out there and, and get the nuts started. Would be my recommendation. And last, last one, last part. Just get these snugged up. Crisscross pattern is always best to make sure uh, the flange tightens evenly and squarely over the connection. And there you have it. I, uh, when I first started Eccentric Engineer, going on close to four years ago, um, this was one of the first products that I announced that I would be making. So it's nice uh, to finally have these done. And I'm super happy with how they came out, and frankly I'm glad that uh, it took this much time because a lot of design changes have been made over the years as I've learned you know, what to do and what not to do, both with injector design and with castings. Um, that these ended up just coming out beautifully, far better than, than originally designed. And they come with a manual with uh, lots of information on operation, maintenance, troubleshooting. And uh, they're in stock, so I have extras. If you've ordered one, it's uh, already on its way. And if you want one, I have extra. So, thanks for watching.